This is video four on class one levers. In our last lever, we, we determined that we had a distance of resistance of 7.2 feet. And what I was about to say when I ran out of time was that it doesn't matter which component is missing. If you have distance of effort, if you have force of effort missing, or if you have force of resistance missing, you simply take the numbers that you have in your, in your equation and you plug them in in the equation where they belong and you do the same steps that I did last time um, dividing out the number that is next to the variable and the first example is d of r but it could have very well have been f of e um, you would just divide the number next to it out and and the pounds or the units that, that it would require. If it was like D of E, then you would divide six feet from this, from both sides of the equation. Okay, so then you would come up with a solution for either force of effort, force of resistance, you know, all of those units. So now let's, let's do some calculating of mechanical advantage. Now, the mechanical advantage formula is um, a little easier, I think, than trying to figure out one of the units. Let me get this out of the way. So there's this thing called IMA. IMA is called the ideal mechanical advantage. And IMA is a calculation of um, distances. So you have the distance of effort divided by the distance of resistance will give you whatever the mechanical advantage is of the of the lever. Of course if the lever's in static equilibrium chances are it's going to be in one. Uh, but let's see. Let's see what the the deal is with this one. In this case our um, force of effort, our distance of effort, is 6. And we just calculated that our distance of resistance is 7.2. So if we have 7.2 divided by 6, so you can see here I've calculated IMA. The ideal mechanical advantage is 6 feet divided by 7.2 feet and that equals 0.833. Now what does that mean? And what do you do? Do you put feet next to it or something? No. You don't put feet next to it because you have factored out foot over foot. In the last video I said that you can take a foot and you can get rid of the or you can take a foot over a foot and you can get rid of the units because one over one is one, one foot over one foot is one. So you get rid of the units and now instead of saying 8.33 we'll say 8.33 to one. It now becomes a ratio and that's noted by adding colon one. Well what does that mean? It's like uh, the mechanical advantage, in this case is a mechanical disadvantage because it's it's um, less than one. So the mechanical advantage means that how much work is the machine doing? And you know what I always look at is how much work is the machine doing compared to how much work I'm having to do. So in this case, since we're our load side is less than our um, effort side, it comes out to 0.833 to 1. So it's, it's a mechanical disadvantage. If it were greater than 1, then it would be a mechanical advantage. Um, and if it's 1, we're back to static equilibrium again. So this is the ideal mechanical advantage. When we're talking about ideal mechanical advantage, we're not taking into account any kind of friction loss or anything like that. We'll get to that when we calculate AMA, which is actual mechanical advantage, which is going to be in our next video. So good luck figuring this out and do some practice exercises with this. I'll have a page on the website with practice problems.